All right, what I want to do today is talk a little bit about how I would approach some structure determination problems. Uh, we talked about this in class tomorrow, but we didn't actually go through an entire problem. Uh, and so I want to go through it so you can see the strategy that I would use to solve one of these problems. Uh, hopefully that will help as you think about how you want to approach these problems uh, on future problem sets and on the upcoming exam. So the one that I want to start with is problem number three, part A, the one that we didn't discuss at all in class. Uh, so again, this is from Daily Problems 12, from 3, Part A, uh, and if you want to see what it looks like, that's what it looks like. All right, so let's take a look at this problem, and I'll work through how I would do it. All right, so we know the molecular formula is C5H12O. Uh, if we do our degrees of unsaturation on this, again, we ignore O, Cn, H2N plus 2. Uh, so we have C5 H 2 times 5 plus 2. We would get C5 H 12. So we have 0 degrees of unsaturation. All right, so we have no pi bonds, no rings. That's very important for us to start this problem. Uh, and interestingly, we have an oxygen. All right, so, so what are our structural options for O with zero degrees of unsaturation. All right, pause the video if you want to actually think about that. Uh, we only have two. We have either an alcohol or an ether. That's it. All right, so we have two options, either an alcohol or an ether. And we should be able to very quickly figure out the difference between these by looking at the IR. All right, so if we look at the IR for this, right, so IR of an alcohol, we have a huge peak somewhere between 3,200 to 3,600 wave numbers. If we look at the IR for this compound, there is no peak at that position. All right, so IR of an alcohol, huge peak. We don't have this, all right? So we should, be very, we should be able to very quickly determine that this compound is an ether, okay? So it must be an ether, all right? So now in our heads, we're thinking we have some sort of R group attached to an oxygen and another R group on the other side, okay? Very important for us to identify that, all right? And it makes sense that if we look at the IR, really all we have in the IR is CSP3 to H. Right? We know that's what we must have because we have no pi bonds and no rings. So there's really not a lot of information in the IR other than the key fact that this thing must be an ether because there's no alcohol peak. If we look at the C13 NMR, we have one, two, three, four, five peaks. So there's no symmetry. Right? So again, IR, we don't have an alcohol. C13 NMR, we have five peaks, no symmetry, okay? Um, that's all we need to get from the C13 NMR. Now we can focus on the proton NMR. All right, if we look at the proton NMR, this is what we have. We have 3.36, um, 2H triplet, 3.31, 3H singlet, 1.55, 2H quintet, 1.35, 2H sextet, and 0 0.95, 3H triplet. Okay, that's the given information, all right? So what we want to do is write down what we know about this, all right? So here's our structural fragment, all right? And so what we're going to do is in black, we're going to do uh, protons for the peak, all right? And in red, we're going to do neighbors.
Okay. And I think it's really important when you have stuff like this to just write out CH, CH2, CH3, all of that stuff, right? So 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, right? It's telling us we have a CH2, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. All right, now our job is to figure out what that pattern looks like in terms of neighbors and other things that are around. All right, we have two peaks that are below three, very de-shielded. It should be clear that those oxygen, those carbons are attached to oxygens, right? So we have an OCH2 and OCH3. This is really important right here. That's one side of the ether, right? ROR. One of the R's is a CH3, right? Because it's a singlet methyl group. It's got to be attached to oxygen. Now we just need to find the other side uh, of that ether, right? And I think we can do that reasonably quickly. This CH2 is a triplet. That means it has two neighboring protons. So its neighbor is a CH2. Okay. If we look at this uh, next peak, right, which is a 2H quintet, quintet split into five lines. It has two neighbors. So it has a CH2. Or it has four neighbors, CH2 on either side. Four neighbors split into five lines. Right, the sextet has five neighbors split into six lines, so CH2 on one side, CH3 on the other. And the CH3, that's a triplet, has two neighbors, right? And I think it's important, right? It looks like there's a whole bunch of carbons here, right? Don't forget, this is completely consistent with what we're going to get for the final structure, which is a CH3, oxygen, CH2, 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 CH3. Right? And I think it's really important once you come up with a proposed structure to assign the peaks and make sure it all makes sense. All right? So our CH3 at the end, this would be 3.31, right? and it would be a 3H singlet. The CH2 next to the oxygen, 3.36, right? 2H triplet, that makes perfect sense. Next one. 1.55, 2H quintet. Next one, 1 1.35, 2H sextet. And the final one, 0 0.95, 3H triplet. Okay? And all of that makes perfect sense, but it's really important to double check and make sure that all of those things make sense. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. Um, looking at how I would approach a problem like this. Um, and again, we'll talk more about these sorts of things in class on Wednesday.